Hi, I'm Scott Mansell and welcome to Driver 61's Definitive Circuit Guide to Silverstone GP. In this guide we're going to analyse some real race footage, reviewing racing lines, braking references and all other aspects of putting a great lap together at Silverstone. YouTube is a new channel for us, so please help us out by subscribing. That way you'll be informed when new circuit guides and how-to videos are released. So, without further ado, let's take a look at a complete lap of Silverstone GP before we head into the corner by corner detail. So here we are on the start finish line of the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit, sat in the Radical SR3 that I raced last year. Silverstone GP circuit is just a fantastic track. You can carry so much speed through corners such as Cops and the Maggots Beckett's complex, which is just a fantastic thrill in any car really. So we're going to run through a full lap um, of my driving just so you can get a feel of the circuit before we go into the corner by corner detail. So we're heading flat out down here towards the first corner of Abbey, really really quick, sixth gear before we turn into the left of Farm. We're then coming down towards Village which is a heavy braking zone bringing it into the right hander, slow speed corner before the second gear loop corner. Now we're just focusing on getting a good exit coming out of the loop because the Aintree corner here is flat out and we want to carry as much speed down the Wellington Strait as we possibly can. Good opportunity to check your mirrors and temperatures as you're coming down here and then we're hard on the brakes as we're entering Brooklands here which is a medium speed uh, fourth gear corner. Back on a short straight before we head through Luffield. Lots and lots of patience required here before we get on the gas to head down the old start finish straight. Good vision required here through Woodcote as we're heading past the old pits on the right hand side. Now we've got a really quick corner of cops coming up. Using all the entry as we enter, just kissing the apex and running over all the curb before we're heading down towards the Maggots, Beckets and Chapel complex. Really quick entry into the left and the right. Slight braking as we enter Beckets. Back on the gas slightly before a little lift and then back on the throttle as hard as we can before we come through chapel, trying to get the best exit as we come down the hangar straight, which is uh, one of the quickest parts of the circuit. Now we're heading down to Stow, which is another quick corner, fourth or fifth gear in most cars. We're just brushing the brakes in the radical here, carrying as much speed into the apex as possible before we get back on the throttle, aiming to get a good exit as on the run down to Vale. Vale's a second gear chicane in most cars, a left and then a jink right before we head out flat out through club which is the final corner here on the Grand Prix circuit at Silverstone. So here we are on the start line of the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. Um, just for your reference, uh, if you are given any indication in a race uh, such as a black and white flag or a black flag or a mechanical flag, you'll be given it here and the checkered flag will be given up here just below the gantry. So we'll be heading down the main start finish straight here at Silverstone um, up to the first corner which is Abbey. Now Abbey is a very quick corner um, almost quite similar to Cops in the fact that it's a fifth or sixth gear right hander. In terms of safety there is a little bit of runoff um, on the outside but you do have to be careful because farm corner which is the left hander that follows Abbey comes up very quickly and there's a bit of crass if you do run off the, the track there. So in a lot of aerodynamic cars um, the first corner will be flat or, or almost flat. In the GT cars and track day cars you'll probably have, well you, you will have to brake and you'll have to have a downshift. So we're looking out for some braking reference points such as just here on the left hand side the white strip or which is more likely down here the, uh, the start of the entry curb on the left hand side. And again as always with the entry curb we're not looking at it, we're using it in our peripheral vision and we don't have to brake exactly where it starts, we might be taking a point that's 20 meters before and then slowly working down to the the, the curb or even past it depending on your cars and your capabilities. Obviously we're keeping the car over to the left hand side here 
We're using as much of the road on the left as possible. And at this point, we are already looking towards the inside of Abbey. On the left hand side here, you can see that we have an entry curb as all these modern uh, Formula One circuits have. Now this first part of the entry curb that you can see here is just paint on the tarmac so it's more than fine to run on it. Probably not in the rain but in the dry you can run on it. However, from here onwards you don't want to be running onto the curb. It's serrated and it will uh, destabilize the car. So we're coming in to Abbey, very quick corner, so you want to get your vision a long way ahead of yourself and everything into a, uh, into a quick corner needs to be nice and smooth and if you're braking make sure it's a, a nice brush on the brakes. We don't want to be pushing the brake pedal too hard or dabbing the brakes as some people do. Taking as much road in th into the entry as you can, as you can see on the left hand side of the road here, gently bringing the car into Abbey and now we're looking at the apex and now actually beyond towards the exit. However, you'll know that you've made the apex correctly here at Abbey if you come to the inside of the corner where these two sausages are on the inside. Now around various corners here at Silverstone which you'll see later in this tutorial there's lots and lots of these uh, these little ramps that are on the inside of the curbs. Now you don't really want to run on them you could cause your car to some damage and actually if you do run over um, the inside of the, the normal curb here, sorry let me just get rid of this, if you run over the inside of the curb just here according to the English uh, rules you'll be deemed illegal. If you've made those sausages on the inside, if you've made the apex, your vision wants to be towards the exit of the corner, now we're looking all the way out here and you should be now, depending on what car you're in, beginning to blend in the accelerator. Keeping our vision towards the outside of the corner and we're just going to let the car run out. Now in this radical, um, it's not necessary to use all the road because it makes it through. However, if you're in a car that doesn't have aerodynamics or is a bit quicker in a straight line than a radical, there is a chance that you might want to run the car a little bit further over to the left hand side of the track. Next up is farm, which again is a very quick left-hander, very similar to the right, obviously in the other direction. You want to turn the car in nice and gently, and you, again, look on the left-hand side of the image here, you can see three uh, humps as you did last time. So if you make those, if you make the curb on the inside where those humps are, you know that you've made the apex. Most cars will be almost flat through this corner if not flat and on the exit it's a bit of a compromise you don't want to be running too far over to the right hand side over here and also you don't want to be too tight to the left because that means that you haven't carried enough speed through the left hander if you're too far over to the right it means that it's going to be very difficult to get the car back across to the left hand side of the track here uh, which is the optimum line for the next right of village. So somewhere in the middle of the road is about the perfect line. On the left hand side it's quite difficult to find a break in reference because you're quite a long way from the barriers and there's nothing along the bottom um, of the, the grass here. However I would use the start of the curb and a number of meters before it as your braking point. Now in this radical we're braking on the uh, at the beginning of the entry curb. However, the Radical is one of the most late braking cars that you can get. So all other cars will be 50, 70, maybe even 100 meters before the start of this curb. As you can see here, before we brake, it's very important that we get the car in a straight line. So you can see the steering wheel, the steering is straight as I'm braking but I'm aimed towards the outside of the circuit here. That way when I release the brakes we'll be on the outside of this circuit and we can open up village as much as possible. It's important to hit the car in a straight line before you get on the brakes and as you can see I end up all the way on the outside of the circuit here 
before we're entering village. Now, at this point, your vision, it's important that it's on the apex of the corner. Uh, as I'll show in a few moments, this curb has a big sausage curb on the inside, so it's important not to run over it too much. But your vision wants to be over there, and that way you can gauge when to release the brakes and your speed into the corner much more easily. So gently bringing the car in, and at this point, it's a bit of a strange corner village. It opens out and then tightens up. So at this point, you can actually come off the brakes really quite early and carry as much speed into the apex as possible. Here you can see the sausage curb on the, on the right hand side. We don't want to be going over that. It will destabilize the car too much. However, it's fine to use all of the normal curb here on the right hand side. You may be able to notice just on the outside here, there's a load of tarmac on the outside. So if you do miss your braking point by five meters or something like this, you can run onto the onto the tarmac on the outside and it isn't too much of an issue. So if you really want to practice your late braking or really find the limit there, this is one of the best places at Silverstone to do it. Now again, on the exit of Village, it's all a bit of a compromise. You don't want to run too far over to the left. On the other side of things, you don't want to keep it too close to the right hand side. Most important thing here is that we get a good exit through the next corner, which is a left hand hairpin called the loop. The reason for this is that the Wellington Strait follows it and you're going to be flat out for a long time. So if you take another couple of miles an hour coming out of the loop, then you carry that all the way along the next straight and you're going to gain some lap time. So here you don't need to go all the way to the outside of the circuit. The circuit seems to open up here quite a lot. Um, but you don't want to be too far over to the left hand side. So probably we just wind it back a little bit probably three quarters of the way across the circuit. Somewhere around this area is where we want the car to, to end up before we turn into the left. So we'll bring it forwards again. You can see my head um, at the bottom right hand of the screen. We're already looking across at the apex and the loop almost feels clumsy. It's uh, You're off the throttle for a long time. You're just waiting to get the car turned. And in a few moments, you'll see the apex come into shot. I've just slightly missed the curb there. It won't have cost me any time, really. But if you can, try to get the, uh, the left-hand tire on the curb. Already here, we're looking towards the exit of the loop. And this is one of the most important parts of Silverstone, to get on the throttle here as soon as you possibly can, so you can carry that speed down the next straight. So we're looking towards the exit of the corner. We're looking up here so we can gauge how we can release the steering and how early we can get back on the accelerator. As you can see here, I do a pretty good job. We bring the car out, no oversteer, and just use a little bit of the curb there. You can see there's a little bit of tarmac, but if you're running out there already, um, here, you can see the tarmac on the outside before we have the grass here. If you're running out on the tarmac there already, it's likely that you've compromised your exit anyway. So you want to be just gently letting the car run out as you come out of the loop. Next up, we've got Aintree. And to be honest, in most cars, it's flat out. In the Radical, it's very easy. In some road cars, maybe you'll need a little lift and possibly in some GT cars that don't have much downforce. So at Aintree, uh, because it's quite a quick corner, it's important to get your vision across at the apex nice and early. So you can see where the car's heading and looking through the corner here towards the exit. That way you can best predict your line, predict how fast you can go through the corner and be as consistent as you possibly can. Notice again on the left hand side, we have the two uh, sausages, the two curbs on the inside here and here uh, that will actually show us where the apex is. Now the reason they're there is to keep big GT cars and saloon cars off the grass and where better to place them than at the apex. That's where everybody's going to run. So it's really easy to tell at Silverstone when you've actually made the apex because you'll see these two or three red curbs. So through Aintree, one of the most important corners at Silverstone, let the car run out wide as much as you can just to free the engine up, free the car as we're coming down the next straight.
So we're coming down the Wellington Strait. This is a good opportunity to check your mirrors, check your temperatures. If you're on a track day, it's a good opportunity to let any cars through if there's somebody quicker behind you. And we're coming down into the old complex um, and into Brooklands with the BRDC on our right here. Now coming down into Brooklands, it's a big braking area, a uh, slow to medium speed corner, but it tightens up as you enter. Now there's lots and lots of braking references on the right hand side here, so it's easy to, uh, to predict your braking. First of all, we have the beginning of this green concrete. We have the end of the green concrete. We also have, for those in a, a late braking car, the start of the entry curb here. And for those in, uh, in a really late braking car, such as the Radical, we have the turning sign all the way down here. Now, in the Radical, the line's slightly different. Because you can brake so late in this car, you can actually turn the car in before you brake. So the line's a little bit different. In a track day car or a GT car, what's most likely is that you'll run a normal line where you'll be parallel to the white line as you come down into Brooklands. With the Radical, we'll come down here and we'll actually turn the car in and then brake uh, as it, it shortens the circuit and it's a little bit quicker when you're braking that way. As with, uh, with Turn 1, we have an entry curb here and as you can see, again, we have probably 20 centimeters of flat tarmac that's been painted and then the rest of it is normal curb. So just run on the, the paint here in the dry. Obviously in the rain, we're gonna try and stay off the paint because it will be very slippery, but just use as much road as you can on the outside to open up the corner as much as possible. Now we're coming down into Brooklands. As you can see, the line in the radicals changed a little bit. I've turned the car in and now we're already on the brakes. In most cars, as I mentioned, you'd be a car or a car and a half width to the right hand side of where the radical is right now so you can open up the corner as much as possible. Your vision wants to be a long way ahead of yourself and actually the apex at uh, Brooklands is quite a long way around the corner, somewhere around here. So we're gradually, gradually increasing the steering lock as we're coming into Brooklands. You don't just turn like a, a uniform normal corner, you gradually increase the steering lock as you're coming off the brakes bringing the car in towards the apex. Now you can really see that we're bringing the car in towards the apex. And usually um, there are three bollards here on the inside. Unfortunately, uh, today, or when this video was taken, a GT car or somebody's knocked them over and taken them out, so you can't quite see them. But when they do replace them, there's three on the inside, and you want to make the apex between the second and the third bollard. They're really, really easy to spot when you're coming into Brooklands. You also have the two um, red curbs here on the inside, which will show you where the apex is, as you can see just here. So I've made the apex right on the inside, exactly where the two red curbs are on the inside of the normal cup. We're getting back on the throttle nice and smooth. We use all of the road on the outside, making sure that we're looking a long way ahead of ourselves as usual. Letting the car run out onto the curb on the outside. Here at Brooklands as well, I forgot to mention, there is some tarmac around the outside. So if you do break a little bit too late, just continue straight on a little bit and use the tarmac around the outside so you don't spin the car. Next up, we've got Luffield, which is the slow speed, 180 degree corner. Quite technical because, again, we need to make sure that we really get a good exit coming out of Luffield. So as you can see here, we're not fighting to bring the car back over to the, um, to the left-hand side over here, as you might think, to, to get the best line through Luffield. Because it's such a long corner, the entry doesn't really make any difference and you're better off carrying the speed through the previous corner than you are opening up the entry to Luffield. As we come into Luffield, we'll have a, a short braking area and we turn the car in. So let me just rewind it a little bit. We bring the car 
away from the curb just slightly and we turn the car in again, make an initial apex around here, just touching the curb, and then we'll let the car push away from the curb a little bit. We'll feather the throttle or balance the throttle again. And then at some point, about half the way round to three quarters of the way round, we'll lift off the accelerator, bring the car back in towards the apex here before we get back on the accelerator as quickly as we can to maximize the exit. Now the reason that we V off the corner like this is because you're better off in most cars having the slower point a bit earlier in the corner, then getting the car turned so you open up the exit, which is back here. We are opening up the exit of Lefield here. Then we're getting the car turned, bringing it in, and at this point, I'm flat out, okay? If you stayed on the inside all the way around Luffield, you wouldn't be able to get flat out until probably around this area. So it makes quite a big difference and it means that you can carry more speed along the old start finish straight, which we're just coming on to, uh, than if you went all the way around the inside of the corner. So as usual, we should have our vision a long way ahead of ourselves. We're looking somewhere in this area so we can gauge our racing line and gauge how quickly we've got, we can get on the accelerator. We're allowing the car to push all the way to the outside here. Now, on this particular lap, I haven't used all of the curb that I could have. I could probably use another 20 or 30 centimeters of curb running along here. Just beyond that, you can see here there's some astroturf. Now, if you do fall onto that, it's deemed illegal with the UK racing rules. However, you know, if you're just testing or you make a small mistake, then uh, it's usually fine. So we're coming up now uh, through Woodcut. Now in the dry in most cars, Woodcut isn't really an issue. In the wet, it can be quite difficult and uh, it can actually be quite a dangerous corner because a lot of people who have poor vision and don't look far enough ahead will come in uh, too tight into Woodcut, run out of road on the exit, lift off the accelerator and crash into the pit wall on the inside. It's a... Uh, standard track day accident so make sure you don't do that make sure you're looking well ahead of yourself the best thing to do is to look out for these bollards that are quite a long way ahead of us if you look out for the last bollard that's where you want to bring the car to the inside of the circuit so here we are coming up to the final bollard on the right hand side just here that i mentioned previously and now we're just going to let the car push towards the outside of woodcut now, this is the point where a lot of people make a mistake where they're coming through woodcut and they've turned in too early. So it means they're being pushed out um, on the exit and they have to lift off the accelerator and they're increasing the steering input and they will spin and turn towards the pit wall, as you can see by many of these marks down the pit wall. So if you do feel like you're running out of road on the exit of Woodcote, just use the new tarmac on the outside here. You're better off to run across the curb and onto this new tarmac than you are trying to turn more, lifting off the accelerator and then crashing heavily into the old pit wall. Next up, we've got one of the best sequences of corners in the whole world. We've got the incredible right-hander of cops, which is really, really quick. And then we've got Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel before we head down the hangar straight. Now, these are all really, really quick corners and are just fantastic fun, flowing, fluid corners at the Silverstone circuit. So first up, we've got Cops, the old turn one. It's a very quick right-hander, as I've mentioned, but in a track day car or a saloon car or a GT car, you're going to have to brake. So there's a number of braking references on the left hand side. The main one will be this turning marker here. And again, as always, we're not braking exactly on the turning arrow. Maybe we're braking 20 meters before or even 50 meters before. It's just a reference so you know exactly where you are on the track. Again, as with turn one, uh, we can run onto the curb just slightly. Actually on this lap, I've, uh, I've probably pushed it a little bit too far. You don't want to be turning in across the curb this much, I would advise just using 
just using a small amount of the curb here as you can see on the inside we don't want to be running down this part of the curb because the tire will be coming into contact and not coming into contact with the surface below so at this point we should already be looking towards the inside of cops is a little bit difficult here because as you can see we have the pit wall in the way so you can't see through the corner it's actually quite difficult to get the apex right here but we already we need to be looking down there at the curb you can see my head's turned across we've started turning in and again on the inside of cops here we have the two red markers on the inside so as with a lot of the other corners here we've got the red marker here and another one just here when you reach those and you're on the curb you don't want to be on the red markers but when you're on the normal curb in this area here you know that you've made the apex and you can use it as a gauge as to when you can get back on the accelerator so we've made the apex I'm now looking all the way around into this area looking for that thin strip of white there that you can see so I know where the edge of the circuit is and I know how I can release the steering to free up the car as we exit cops so we're coming out and as you can see here I've run the car onto the curb actually a really good exit and as I mentioned you can just run up to the edge of the curb here any further than that and in the UK it's deemed illegal However, if you do make a mistake, there is quite a lot of tarmac on the exit of COPS, so you're much better just running wide and then coming back onto the circuit. Yes, you'll lose a bit of time, but again, you won't have spun out and you won't have uh, headed towards a barrier, which obviously isn't what we want. So hopefully we've got a good exit coming out of COPS, and now we're heading down to my favourite part of the circuit, Maggots, Beckets and Chapel. A left, right, left, right, left onto the hangar straight all really quick no matter what car you're in it's really quick in the radical uh, maggots is flat out in a GT car or a saloon car you're gonna have to brake as you enter in here but we'll run through that in a few moments so we're keeping the car over to the right hand side and in a lot of cars you can turn in flat out but you may if you're in a, a road car you may have to brake around this area maybe a little bit before a little bit difficult to see the apex point uh, as with a lot of silverstone because it's so flat it's difficult to see that far ahead of yourself however we need to be looking down here and in real life it's actually a bit easier to see than it is in this video another note is that when you turn in it should be around the start of the entrance curve on the right hand side here and as I always say don't stare at the turning point you want to be looking towards the inside of the corner however to use it in your peripheral is perfect so with all quick corners all the inputs need to be nice and smooth and we'll bring in the car in if you have any braking to do it should be done in a straight line as possible the straighter that the steering wheel is the more you'll be able to brake if you try and brake with any steering lock in the car it could be that the car will rotate and you might spin so just be careful of that we can use all of the curb on the left hand side here just be careful in the wet if uh, if you're braking across the curb because it will be a little bit more slippery and we can use the whole section of the curb here you don't want to go over this side of the curb because that's a sausage curb and it will destabilize the car one quick note if it's wet when you're at Silverstone this part of the circuit is really really slippery it's a different surface all the way through uh, to chapel and it's just incredibly slippery you can come into here and you have 20 or 30 percent less grip than the rest of the circuit in the rain in the dry you don't notice it really but in the wet you really will really will notice it and a lot of people make a mistake thinking that this part of the circuit has more grip than it actually does coming through to the second part of maggots we need to get our vision well ahead of ourselves as always you can see we need to be looking down at the right hand curb just down here and again we're being very gentle with our inputs bringing the car over to the right hand side of the curb as much as possible and there we have those two trusty red markers on the inside 
run across the curb as much as you can and as you come out it's actually quite difficult to know where to be you almost feel like you're in no man's land so for me you need to be about in the middle of the circuit at this point if not a car a car's width over to the left hand side from this position at this point most cars in the radical even you'll have to break again possibly downshift in this area so try to do it in as straight a line as possible and you have two bollards on the apex of the left hand of Beckett's uh, that you can aim towards so we're heading into Beckett's now and you can see that we make the apex between the second and the third bollard and again we have the two red markers on the inside of the curb. Once you've got to this point, you know that you can get back on the accelerator just slightly before we go through the next right-hander. And again, it feels like you're in no man's land really, but you want to be about in the middle of the circuit. And for me, this is the most important part of this sequence of corners because this is the final part where you need to decelerate before you then get back on the accelerator full and carry that momentum down the hangar straight. So once again, we need to get our vision well ahead of ourselves. And I hope you're spotting the common theme here that we're always looking well ahead of ourselves. That way things are much, much easier when you're driving around a race circuit. And again, we'll be decelerating slightly before we come into the right-hander. We pass the three red markers on the inside. And again, use these as a reference as to when you can get back on the accelerator and to confirm that you've made the apex. Now this is the trickiest bit and this is the most important part of this complex. You need to be looking around this area and if you can just see about here we have the start of the curb for the left hand of chapel. That's the exit point of this right hand corner. So as you can see I'm flat out on the accelerator and we're letting the car push all the way to the outside here up to the white line and there's the beginning of that curve. Okay? There's the beginning of that curve, and you know that you've made the exit point. From here on, you should be flat out through chapel, carrying the speed all the way down the next straight. It's important again to look well ahead of yourself. And in the rain, just be a little bit careful as you come over this point, because as you can see, this white line here, there's a, a change um, of tarmac where the other circuit comes across the Grand Prix circuit, and there's a little bump as you come out of chapel. So just be careful over this area. So now we're heading down the hangar straight. Um, as with all the straights at Silverstone, it's a good opportunity to check your mirrors, seeing if there's anyone behind you that could overtake you if you're in a racing situation, or just checking if there's a quicker car behind you and uh, pulling over to let them through if you're on a track lane. Also check your temperatures and uh, make sure everything's well with the car. So we're heading down the famous hangar straight, coming up to the incredible Stowe corner. Now, as you can see, we're not all the way over to the left-hand side of the circuit here. Now, the reason is, as you go into Stowe, the circuit turns just slightly, just at the bottom as you're entering all the way down here. So if you're parallel with the white line, you actually have to turn while you're in the braking area, which isn't what you want to do. So for that reason, you leave this couple of meter gap and we actually head diagonally across the circuit down here towards the turning point. So we're heading down and uh, in terms of braking references you've got the turn board on the left hand side here you've got the start of this patch of tarmac or, or gravel and you've got the beginning of the entry curve here. Now it all depends on your ability and what kind of car you're in. The Radical we can go beyond the, uh, the entry curb on the left hand side but most GT cars and saloon cars will be way before that. So we're coming down to Stowe and as you can see we should already be looking at the inside as always well ahead of ourselves and again as with Brooklands um, at the end of the Wellington Strait the entry to Stowe in the Radical is slightly different to most cars as you can actually turn in before you brake. And for that reason, we V the corner off a little bit or we V the entry off a little bit like this, which you wouldn't do in most cars. So if you're in a GT car, 
or a uh, saloon car, or a track day car, Caterham, anything like that, you'll run straight down here in the braking zone and treat it like a traditional corner. Carrying as much speed as we can into Stowe. In the Radical, it's down a couple of gears, so it's a medium high speed corner. And we're just bringing it into that curb quite gently, and the apex is a long way around the corner. Again, on the right hand side, you can see we've got two, three red markers, which signifies that we're at the apex. And from this point, once you've got the car hooked into the apex, you know that you can then accelerate and get the car out of the corner. Now the exit of Stow is quite difficult because you're coming over a brow, but you still need to be looking as far around the corner as possible, and it's just possible to see the exit curbing all the way down here. Back on the throttle as hard as we can, letting the car push out onto the exit curb. Now here at Stow, we have the exit curb, and then we're directly onto AstroTurf here. So you can't take too much uh, risk here. You only really want to run onto the curb, especially in the rain. If you touch this AstroTurf on the inside of the curb in the rain, then you'll end up coming across the circuit here into the barrier on the inside of the track. So just be careful of that. Next up, we are coming down to Vale, which is a slow speed left right chicane. Plenty of markers as we're coming down here. The first one, sorry, let me just go backwards. The first marker is actually this gantry which comes across the circuit like this. You can't quite see it in the video because the camera's not high enough. The gantry comes across. So in a lot of saloon cars and GT cars, you'll be braking around this area. If your car and your ability allows you to, you can actually go a little bit deeper and you've got numerous markers here on the right hand side. Namely, the turning board on the right hand side here and the start of the entry curb uh, right on the white line here. So as we're coming down you can see in the radical I'm braking just at the start of the entry curb. My vision is already at this point across at the inside looking for the curbing on the inside of the corner. So I know how much I need to decelerate and I know how to gauge my racing line. Keeping the car in dead straight line on the brakes, visions across nice and early and we're bringing the car gently into the apex. Now I've missed the apex just slightly here. Should be, I should be a little bit further to the inside, just up against the sausage curb here. Now it's a little bit difficult to see on the footage, but you don't want to go any further than this because there's a big sausage curb on the left hand side and that will destabilize the car. Now, as with most chicanes, it's a bit of a compromise as we come through the first section, as we wanna open up the second section as much as possible. Now, the trick here is to make sure that you are as quick as possible through this next right-hander, because then the final corner club is flat out in most cars, so you need to carry as much speed through the right-hander at Vale as possible. We're bringing the car across to the apex, which actually is where the concrete on the right and the grass blend together. So just about here is where the apex for the right-hander of Vail is. As you can see, some people have run onto the dirt here. If we want to be fully legal, we can only run up to the edge of the curb here. But we wanna be flat out, if possible, through this right-hander at Vail. That way we carry as much speed here as we can. We can let the car just run out wide now, if your car's got a little bit of understeer and you get on the accelerator too soon, you may be tempted to run over the outside of the curb here and onto the AstroTurf. Don't do that because you can see the circuit's got still got a bit of cornering left in it. You'll still be turning the car. You won't get back off the AstroTurf onto the curb. There won't be enough grip there available to get the car back onto the track. At this point, it's really important that you're looking a long way ahead of yourself looking through club, looking at the apex on the inside so we carry as much speed as possible through club because we want to carry that momentum down the following straight. You can see we're bringing the car in, we're using all the road on the apex and it's actually quite quick, it's fourth gear here in the Radical and it has a sausage curb on the inside. So just make sure you don't catch that sausage curb because at such a high speed it may be that you do some damage to the car. 
we've got our vision about where the car is in front of us. We're looking for the exit curb and the exit point, which is just about in this area here. And we're gently letting the car push all the way to the outside here. And again, as with a lot of the corners at Silverstone, you've got a lot of tarmac on the outside of this club corner. As with Woodcote, you can have a very, very similar accident here on the exit of club as you can at Woodcote. A lot of people come out too quickly, their line's not quite right, they lift at the curb and then end up crashing into the pit wall on the right hand side. If you do feel like you're coming out of the corner too soon, just run onto the tarmac on the outside and uh, ease off the accelerator and then bring the car back onto the track. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you've learned a few things. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I'll get back to you. As I mentioned, this is a new channel for us, so if you like this video, please help us by sharing and subscribing. Don't forget to visit the Driver61 website for more detail and to download the Top Tips PDF, as well as more circuit guides and driving technique articles. The link's coming up. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.